G'day, I'm Peter Fritz and welcome to Landscape Photography in 3 Minutes. This is day 5 out of 21 in this series throughout July. And today's subject is three important exposure rules. Now we've already talked about aperture and shutter speed and ISO and how they relate to exposure um, and composing your images. But there are a few very important rules that you want to try and um, maintain throughout your photography. And the very first one is to shoot in RAW. If you shoot in RAW format, which virtually every camera, every DSLR and mirrorless camera is capable of doing, well then it allows you to process the image in Lightroom or Photoshop or something similar with a lot more latitude and a lot more freedom than just simply shooting all your images in JPEG. Now, if you just want to take happy snaps and that sort of stuff, that's fine. JPEGs are going to be fine. And certainly most modern mirrorless cameras are going to produce lovely JPEGs, um, especially in the Fuji lineup. They do fantastic JPEGs. But there's no denying that when you shoot in RAW format, because it captures all of the available data in the image and doesn't process it in camera and make decisions for you about how to color grade it, how to pull out highlights, how to, or pull back highlights, how to pull out shadow detail, because it allows you to do that, you can have a lot more freedom and latitude to decide how your image is gonna present. Now, chances are some of the most compelling images that you've ever seen in landscape photography were shot in RAW. And if you saw the original image versus the processed image, um, they would probably be very, very different. Typically, most photos contain a very wide dynamic range. Uh, if you're shooting landscapes, almost inevitably from time to time, you're gonna have sky in your image or water or reflections on leaves or reflections on rocks, tree trunks, that kind of stuff. And compared to the shadow areas of your image, there's gonna be a huge range of light and shade. When you shoot in JPEG, the camera makes decisions on how much of that highlight detail to recover and how much of the shadow detail to boost in order to deliver an image for you. And then it bakes that into the photo. When you shoot in RAW format, the camera is capturing all of the available data in that image and it doesn't process it. It doesn't say, all right, we're gonna pull back the highlights here, we're gonna boost the shadows a bit here and that's it, get rid of all the rest of the data, here's your image. Instead of that, it gives you a, a raw flat file for you to actually bring into Lightroom or into Photoshop and start pulling back those highlights as much as you want and boosting that shadow detail as much or as little as you want and selectively increasing shadow detail, pulling back highlights, altering saturation, altering the color balance, all those sorts of things in an image. Once you get past this idea of having to do another step with your images, that is processing them in software, you're gonna be amazed at the results that you get. The results are gonna be so much better than anything that gets baked in by the camera for you as a JPEG. So that's rule number one, is to make the extra effort to shoot raw. Now, it doesn't always have to be that way. If you're just shooting happy snaps of the family and stuff like that, by all means, just shoot JPEG. But what you can do is, like what I do with all my cameras, my drone and my stills cameras, is I shoot, um, I set them to shoot raw plus JPEG. So what I'll typically do is I get all my images back, I've got a raw version and a JPEG version of everything, and sometimes I'll just use the JPEG. I'll look at it and go, yeah, I can just boost the shadow a little bit in that, pull back the highlights a little bit in that, and I'm happy, that's good enough. I don't need the raw file to be able to do minor tweaks. But other times, typically the most dynamic and spectacular and uh, amazing um, scenarios like say dawn with fog or you know really bright harsh light and shadows and stuff like that I'll want to process the raw file because it's going to give me a lot more um, latitude for manipulating the shadow detail the highlights pulling back um, those highlights so that I don't burn out and that sort of stuff um, so that would be my first bit of advice Set your camera to shoot RAW plus JPEG and start processing some of your images, some of your RAW images in Lightroom or Photoshop or something similar. Now the second one relates very closely to this and that is don't burn out your highlights. You'll often hear this term exposed to the right and all that means is you can enable a little dynamic graph on your camera called the histogram. The histogram illustrates in graphical format how you are exposing across the darkest to the lightest areas of your image. And exposing to the right simply means that the part of the graph to the right, which 
uh, which signifies the bright areas of your image, providing the waveform on that does not extend beyond the right-hand boundary of that graph, you have not burned out your highlights. And if you're shooting raw and you bring them into Lightroom or Photoshop, you can recover those highlight details. Now, typically we're talking about water or clouds or reflections on leaves, that sort of stuff, <clears throat> particularly with clouds. Once you have an area of your image that is burned out, that means it is completely white. There is no longer any detail in that image is pure white. And that often happens in clouds and water, unless you follow this rule of exposing to the right. Now with today's cameras, they have such huge dynamic range, especially in shadow areas, that if you expose to the right and your shadows are still very dark, chances are you can recover that shadow detail in Photoshop or Lightroom. If you're in doubt about that, well then the second option is to take two, or maybe even three, but typically two is enough, exposures of the same image. Take an image where the sky is away from the right-hand side of your histogram and not overexposed. Even expose it nice and dark if you want to, especially for sunsets and sunrise to get that really rich color. And then take a second exposure of the darker areas with your exposure increased a little bit to bring out the detail in those uh, shadow areas. Make sure you're locked off on a tripod, obviously, and then you can blend those two images within Photoshop or Lightroom to create a beautiful balance between the shadow areas and the bright areas. Overexposing your highlights or burning out your highlights is just like burning a steak. Once the steak is burned, you cannot recover it. You cannot uncook it. But if it's undercooked, in other words, if it's like your shadow areas or your highlights have not been overcooked, then you can cook them a little bit more in Photoshop or Lightroom if necessary. Um, but once something is burned, you can't recover it. <laughs> if it's just warm, then you can cook it a little bit more if necessary. So don't burn out your highlights. And the third one is don't overdo HDR processing. The temptation, certainly in the early days, is to recover all the shadow detail and to, um, to, re to pull back all the highlights so that you've got this really dramatic sky and you've got this really sort of rich detailed shadow area in your image and it just looks unrealistic. It does not look real. Um, so while at first you might look at it and go, wow, that looks really cool, the reality is, and I'm all for processing your images however you want. I mean, it doesn't have to be like reality. But if you're photographing a natural environment and it starts to look incredibly unnatural, um, then it kind of loses its appeal a bit. So all I would say is, and this is really just a suggestion, don't overdo the HDR look of pulling back the highlights heaps and lifting up the shadows heaps to create this really weird kind of HDR look. It was super popular many years ago with portraiture and, and landscapes to a lesser degree, but you know it's time has passed, I think, so don't overdo that. Anyway, that's it for this episode. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, then subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. For more on this subject, just click here.